The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. As we come into Fed Day, folks, announcement 2 p.m. Eastern time today, press conference at 2.30 to follow. Markets accelerating off of the lows we had yesterday. You make a low at 38.43 at about 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're up about 50 points from there. You're up about 20 points from where we were at the close yesterday. S&Ps inching towards 3,900 right now. NASDAQ 100, we're at about 11,971. You were as low as about 11,830. So you're up more than 1% from the lows just yesterday. Dow up 136 points right now, 30,937. And the Dow and the Russell up by about 12. Bitcoin back above 19,000 this morning, 19,225. Crude up a buck 40 at 85.36. You got the gold contract right now. Up $10 at 1681. We jumped to notes and bonds on an all important Fed day. And you have the 10 year right now positive by three ticks but you see the give back right there uh even in the last what is that half hour or so the tenure trading lower by about five or six ticks right now you jump over we're talking about yields man 3.555 3.56 percent almost the yield on the tenure as we come in right now to fed decision day and we jump to the vix volatility index right now 26.91 we were size almost 28 when you had those market lows overnight 28.45 the highs of Friday morning. We jump around to the action right now, and let's start it off with a headline. Fed to hike and hammer home hawkish, mes hawkish message. Say that three times fast, right? Uh, the dot plot forecast. Now, this one's an interesting one, folk, folks. Uh, how long are those dot plots going to push things out? I read one article this morning talking about restrictive policy might be here through 2025. Restrictive policy through 2025. 25. That's a long time from right now, man. Markets will hone, I should hone in on the policymakers' projections of monetary tightening in the dot plot for year's end and 2023. I mean, the shorter duration that you are out, the more accurate they're probably going to be. Pricing in rates peaking near 4.5% next March. But the Fed, they've been uh, vague about their terminal rate plans. When are they going to end? How long are they going to stay there? They're probably going to hike by 70 basis points. Uh, right now, 20% chance of 100 basis points coming at you. Uh, you got different people, though. Robert Dent of Nomura, he's going big. He's saying that's actually the likely outcome, which would put it over 50%. Uh, at the last meeting in July, Powell left the door open to such a move. We would not hesitate to make an even larger move than we did today if the committee were to conclude that was appropriate. What he's always been saying all along, folks, is that he's leaving everything open. He's going to let the data decide everything, which is why that CPI data was so important when the market accelerated lower on the Tuesday CPI data. Uh, now, FOMC may project slow growth, higher unemployment. OK, when you're talking about where you are now, 2022. OK, let's just look at CP PCE or uh, yeah, PCE inflation and core. 2022, 5.2%. Okay, they're looking for some pretty dramatic come downs there. In terms of PCE, you're talking about 2.6% by the year forecasted growth in the Fed's goal. Uh, PCE, 2.6%. You look at the core number, PCE is at 2.8%, right? Fed funds rate, boy, you're talking about barely waning in terms of we're talking about a number of 2.5% in 2020. That's longer term. Yes. 2.88% is where you would be on that number for 2025. It's 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 almost tough to digest how high the percentages be could be for how long. 
Yeah, so the updated summary of economic projections is going to include the policymakers' first forecast for 2025. So that's part of the discussion there is what they're going to talk about. While most of the investors will focus will be on the rate forecast for this year and next because everything can change so dramatically, uh, projections may also show the FOMC, FOMC expects to keep rates higher for longer with rates coming down only to 3.6% in 2024 and 2.9%. This is the Fed. In 2025, I hope the economy is doing well if they're still at rates at that level. And you're talking about almost three years from where we're at right now. Um, yeah, with inflation persisting, the Fed could project inflation returning to its 2% target only in 2025. I think it's going to be a real low slide. I think it's going to be a real low slide, okay, to... 2%. In terms of the final 1% from 3 to 2, from 4 to 2, nonetheless, uh, it's going to be a slow one. And 2025 is not out of the realm at all. Fed's likely to reiterate that recent indicators of economic growth have softened. I would say so, man. You got some big numbers that just came out uh, in terms of that CPI number from the last time that you had the Fed out there. They've stepped up its shrinking of its $8.8 .8 trillion balance sheet to an annual pace of $1.1 trillion. Some Fed officials have favored the sale of mortgage-backed securities as part of the effort. There's going to be a lot going on in the press conference, man. And, you know, the one thing I will say is sometimes this market has a habit of getting ahead of a Fed decision. I think I even saw a headline. Maybe I haven't pulled it up. You take a look at the daily. Sometimes the accelerations have bottomed out. That is one instance. On the March meeting, that's when you got your first acceleration, man. The, the market accelerates into that March meeting. You're able to bounce up to 4,600. And then what happens, man? All of the air comes out of the room and you trade down 1,000 S&P points after that bounce. Doesn't mean the bounce will hold, okay? But we have traded lower into the Fed meeting that has provided some of the bounces when we've eventually gotten there because the market gets ahead of things, man. Now, there is... Your CPI data, folks, you drop off from about 4175 to 3950. So the market has lost about 300 points since we got that CPI data. But all we've done is trade back to September 7th. That's another way to put it, man. Right? If you said you were coming into Fed Day on September 7th, so two weeks ago, exactly. Okay? If you said in between that time, we're going to get the CPI data that we got. Where do you think the market's going to be when we come into a Fed decision with the S&P trading at 3,900 on September 7th, and we're going to be trading at about 3,900 on September 21st, and here's what the CPI data is going to reveal in the two weeks in between that time. I think many of us would say that the market's probably going to be lower than where it was on September 7th if we got the CPI number we did, which we did. And yet, here we find ourselves, folks. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. We'll kick it off with Apple. Apple, higher by about 30 cents today. Apple catching a little bit of a bid. Apple almost traded all the way back to its 618 of the entire run higher from June up to the highs of August. You back off to a low of about 148.37. You're up to 157.26 so far this morning. We'll jump over to Amazon shares. Trading up a bit at 122.61. You see the difference there. Not quite as big of a bounce at all when you're looking at Amazon shares compared to what Apple had going on there in a big way. Uh, we could have some retail sales problems, folks, if you have economy problems. And that's going to impact Amazon. You know, Apple has their issues as well. I talked about it earlier this week, though. Apple, and they make a lot of money, a lot of money, folks, off the premium phones that they're selling. Maybe the more affluent individuals might handle a recession even a little bit better than most. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Network. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures up by 23 right now. NASDAQ 100, you're up by about 60 points. The Dow up 161. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV, the, T the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the whole team at TD Ameritrade Network. They walk you through the day's market action, folks. They're talking defined risk. They're walking you through hypothetical trade setups using options. Uh, in every trade that they're going over, defined risk in quite a market, and we got a big day. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, it's a big day, and you know, it's interesting. The Fed is going to dominate today's news, but there's some other news out there that no on a normal day would move markets like Vladimir Putin uh, and what he's doing over in Russia right now would be a market-moving event. However, it looks like Jerome Powell uh, is going to dominate to today's trading with the question is which Jerome Powell is going to show up, Tommy? Is it the market calming Jerome Powell? Is it the delivery of the news that the markets like, or is it the Jackson Hole Jerome Powell and the one who's harsh and short and to the point and talk uses word like pain? That's what the market's trying to figure out right now, Tommy. It's a tough one, man. And in my head, I try and go over, you know, he said throughout all of this, right, that he's going to be data dependent, as I'm sure every Fed chairman or chairwoman would. But I think it's so important right now. And so you're going to get a glimpse of it in terms of where they go right now in the messaging, Kevin. But, you know, I'm reading a lot this morning about even there's going to be projections for 2025 for the first time. Uh, the projections have been so wrong for so long almost going into, you know, the last year, how this has persisted, the word transitory and all of that. So we're going to get what we're going to get today. It seems like we're going to get a very big hike, right? The Fed is probably going to be um, pretty hawkish, in my opinion. And then where do we go from there? As in, does it become about the next CPI data, Kevin? Or do we just go right to those next data points to see? Because when I think about 
projections, and I know the market's going to care a lot more about the next year projections because they're probably more reliable. But you're talking about going out so far that I feel like if we're dealing with inflation that's anywhere near where we're at right now and we still have an unemployment rate that's in the ballpark of 4%, it seems like the, the, we're going to have a big problem right now with the Fed being a big giant in the room for, for a foreseeable future. Do you, do you, what's your take on that kind of analysis of things? Remember something. Even Jerome Powell has mentioned while standing at a podium that the projections going forward, the dot plot, are not reliable. So I wouldn't look on any of that. If you're trading these markets on a daily basis, you don't care about 2025. You don't care. You care about the data that's coming out right now and the market reactions to that data. Now, Jerome Powell will set the tone, I think, for the next few months or weeks in his comments. But beyond that, you have no idea, none of us do what this market's going to do. So trade the news today. Don't worry about a dot plot out to 2025 because, frankly, they've been discounted by the Fed chair himself. So if he discounts them, I do too, Tommy. Yeah, that's why I asked you the question, man. And uh, it's going to be a wild one for sure. Now, what's your take on trading into uh, the Fed meeting. I was talking about as I kicked off the program, you brought it up many times earlier in the year. I can't believe we're already six months past it. But when we came into that March meeting, um, which is where things, you know, really lifted off in a big way in terms of the rates going higher, you actually had the market, Kevin, at that point had traded from 4,800 down to about 4,100. We got quite a reprieve up to 4,600 following that March meeting, and then the S&Ps traded down 1,000 points. Uh, but with the pullback we've seen from the CPI, do you think part of, of a potentially hawkish message, message is, is already built in to uh, an S&P trading down almost 300 points from where we were just last Tuesday? Well, 75 basis points is surely baked in. But Jerome Powell's comments aren't baked in, right? Which Jerome Powell shows up today, and how does he talk about the overall market? Because let's face it, Jerome Powell in Jackson Hole was different than we had seen him uh, historically. So if he takes on that tone, you know, th this market is going to react to that. Now, Tommy, is the, is, could there be a relief rally no matter what Jerome Powell says? Yes, there, there, there absolutely could be. And you've got to be cognizant of that as well. Is, is there, does relief come out of this, or is it more uh, pressure on the overall market? And I don't know that yet, Tommy. I've got I to gotta find out what he says and how he says it, frankly. As I like to say, man, we're going to know a lot more when I talk to you tomorrow in 24 hours than yeah. we know right now uh, about yeah. this market. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about beyond the obvious coming up today on Fast Market at 12? Uh, we're going to talk about Darden Restaurants coming out with earnings. We're going to talk about, um, obviously, we'll cover the Fed extensively today, but we'll also look at Lennar. And we'll look at KB Homes, two of the home builders coming out with earnings. But like Folio is going to do a presentation on Darden Restaurant Group. They're coming out with earnings before the open tomorrow morning. Darden Restaurant's trading right now at 132. Good old Olive Garden, uh, along with uh, a couple others that I enjoy Capital out there. Capital Grill, Darden. season 52. I'm 52. sorry, what did you say? Say it again for me, Kevin. Capital Grill and season 52. I was, yeah, they've got a big uh, portfolio of restaurants. It's pretty cool. We've talked about it before. I forgot about Capital Grill. I knew Seasons 52. Uh, they do. A bunch of restaurants, along with, uh, you know, Olive Garden, some good pasta and breadsticks, right? Kevin, we appreciate it, man, taking the time on a busy day, and we look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today. We'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in every trading day. Today, I'm sure it's going to be a good one, especially talking about the Fed. You talk about volatility. You talk about a day of volatility. Uh, today might be that day. S&Ps right now, folks, up about 21 points. Excuse me. And yeah, Darden Restaurants catching quite a bit off their last earnings, right? July, uh, June 22nd, around the last low of 110. You're up a solid 20% from where you were then at 132. And uh, yes, they have Olive Garden Capital Grill Seasons 52. If you're not familiar with Seasons 52, you ever find one, folks? Uh, and I don't own any Darden restaurant stock at all, but I am a fan of Seasons 52. It's a healthier restaurant. So a lot of their meals, um, I don't think there's like a calorie number. There used to be. Every meal they had used to be like 475 or 575 calories. 
um, just a healthy, conscious restaurant in a fine dining atmosphere where they have a bunch of good wine. Uh, they have a guy on the piano or a girl on the piano playing some some tunes while you're in there, live music. And so it was a, a cool atmosphere, a cool concept, and you eat healthy. And it's phenomenal food on top of it, man. I would go in there, and you would be able to get a filet, so you're getting a steak, okay, with vegetables, and you're getting uh, mashed potatoes, not even the cauliflower mashed potatoes, okay? And I would, we would ask even the bartender, the server sometimes, you know, this stuff's so good, you're getting a steak, you're getting, now you're getting the very trimmed up filet, right? Not as much fat on a filet. Filets aren't really that calorie intensive because there's very little fat on them, just a lot of lean meat. But what do they do? in its entirety in that restaurant to keep things as healthy as possible, very little cream or butter, if not none at all. And that's what they said. So the mashed potatoes, they're seasoned well, uh, very little cream or butter. Cream or butter, folks, pretty calorie intensive, just like peanut butter. Love them. Calorie intensive, for sure. All right, folks, we got the open coming up. We're up eight, 18 points now, 19 points in the S&Ps as we come into the opening bell of Fed Day. We have a decision about four and a half hours from right now. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you have the S and P popping a bit. You're up 22 points right now at 38.95. Uh, and you see, from where we were yesterday, though, you're talking about just trading back just above where we were at noon Eastern time, maybe on yesterday. Let alone well off the highs we had early yesterday morning. We're approaching 3,900. Nasdaq 100. You're up by 48 points, right near 12,000. Dow right now, just near 31,000 as well. 30,974. We jump around. Kevin mentioned it, man. We'll jump to Putin. Putin. Uh, so I saw, stop that. Um, one of my friends was sharing one of our group chats. I think the Russian stock market was down like 9% in the last two days. And they were saying that the oligarchs know something. And there proceeded to be many, many um, articles written over the overnight talking about what exactly was going on there. And Putin is mobilizing more troops and uh, wields Ukraine nuclear threat. They're going to call up as many as 300,000 reservists after after losses. Uh, things are escalating, to put it lightly, folks. Uh, Putin declared a partial mobilization, calling up 300,000 reservists in a major escalation, how Bloomberg puts it, of his flagging invasion of Ukraine, uh, which he portrayed as a fight to the death with the U.S. and its allies. Not good, man. Any other day, this would be absolutely dominating if we weren't in fed hysteria right now as russia moves to annex occupied parts of the territory which is now the plan putin also renewed his warnings of a nuclear threat when the territorial integrity of our country is threatened we will certainly use all the means at our disposal to protect russia and our people um this is not a bluff well you never know until it actually is or is not unfortunately um So it's not clear whether the mobilization in the country's first since the Nazi Nazi invasion of World War II will be enough to slow Ukraine's advances on the battlefield. Right. Man, it's pretty intense when you talk about the possibilities that are that are popping up here. Um, yeah. So that that is in the fray with with the geopolitics of China right now and the geopolitics of Russia, man, not getting a lot of press because the Fed is on their hiking cycle that they're on, man. But in any other world, if we were not in a restrictive Fed cycle with inflation at 8.5%, Russia and China would be getting much more coverage, I think, than they're getting for the geopolitical risks that are popping up. We'll jump to mortgage demand. Rises for the first time in six weeks, despite the higher interest rates. Interesting, right? The average increased to 6.25%, folks. 6.25%. Applications to refinance actually rose for the week, although still 83% lower than the same week a year ago. Uh, maybe people think if they need to refinance, they need that money, they need that equity out of that house right now before potentially the equity goes down even more. If the housing market pulls back and it's worth it, you can always refinance in the future too. That's the thing, right? A lot of times people think mentally, oh geez, if I refinance now, I'm at 6.25% and listen, there's a possibility rates aren't going back down to where they were. Okay, I get that. There's a possibility that rates are going to be higher for three, four, five years. There's a possibility that the rates that we just lived through for the last 10 years, we might not see ever again for that type of duration. I get that. Okay, but rates will come back down from where they are right now. They will. So you will have an ability to refinance. You probably won't be locking in 6.25%. But guess what, man? Back in the early 80s when I was born, I was getting savings bonds born in the year 1980, that I think we're pushing 17% yield on that savings bond. So don't say it can't happen. It is possible. You're refinancing at that rate. You're giving up probably a much lower rate to access that equity. Uh, but nonetheless, that's the decision you have right now. And that's the decision people are facing, right? Which is why it's slowing down the economy. It's that simple. So applications were up 10%. Mortgage applications to purchase a home that was for refinancing, rose 1% for the week, but, but with 30% lower than the same week a year ago. Buyers are now seeing less competition in today's pricey market, so some may be jumping in when they have the chance, right? Interesting. It's a lot harder to get a mortgage right now, so if you're willing to get that mortgage right now, you might be able to actually buy a house because there's less competition. Maybe you're the one who wins out and you refinance in three, four, five years, uh, and you make up for what you did on that mortgage rate. But yeah, it showed the average rate on the 30-year fixed rates just below 6.5%, man. They're even higher, of course. 6.5% on a mortgage right now. 
I mean, my dad and Bess would do a show on Fridays, folks. They talk about it. I think they were talking about it last week, or maybe it was Jacob doing the show with Bessford. Um, the statistics, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago with my dad and Bessford, the statistics in terms of what your buying power is, folks, it's almost cut in half in terms of monthly payments, depending on what you're talking about, when you add in that the houses have risen so much. So we'll see where we go from there. All right, let's jump around and see how some of the stocks are opening this morning as we hold positive prices. Amazon dips a bit, down one-tenth percent. We jump over to Apple, up about eight-tenths percent. Apple can't hold Apple down, man. Microsoft shares this morning, you're up about six-tenths percent right now. Let's see how Tesla's trading. Basically flat. We jump to some of the growth stocks. Arc, they're giving it back down about 1.1. They're going to have a volatile day, as usual, when rates are in question. Zoom shares, basically flat so far. We jump over to Roku, down 1.1% right now. DraftKings, another one that's always volatile for growth stocks. DraftKings off 1.9%. Kathy Wood's into uh, Teladoc a lot, down 1%. I don't know, some of these growth stocks, they're getting hit right now. Let's see how Peloton's trading. They came out, they came out with their uh, rowing machine for $3,000, right? And they are now down below nine dollars and fifty cents man look at this thing so you give back everything you were yesterday you were 10 20 yesterday folks right and you just gave up 70 cents for a ten dollar stock set five six percent ten dollars and twenty cents so um yeah i don't know how peloton i mean the recurring revenue is everything for that company that's all i'll say because if you're talking about selling exercise equipment I mean, is there a public company, you know, that sells everything from P90X to Bowflex? Some of them are big companies, but they're not a big company like Peloton, man, as they are priced in for some future growth that is pretty bananas. All right, let's jump around to some of the currencies on Fed Day. We jump as we tease uh, real quick everything, and we'll leave this one because we're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad as we jump around, folks. Look at the dollar on a weekly, man. You're talking about from May of last year at 89 to 110, we're making new highs with the dollar surging higher. Look at that, right? Overnight to 110.77 right now on the dollar index. We jumped to commodities. Crude sitting at about 85 bucks, and you get the gold contract right now. Gold up $10 right now, even with some dollar strength. Let's see how the yen's trading right now on that news as well. Yen back at about 144 right now. Interesting seeing the dollar up about $10 as you have the the yen actually continuing to rise, probably pushing near those highs recently on the dollar yen. The market's giving it up a little bit. NASDAQ 100 barely in the green by about 20. S&P's off by about 15. We just gave up about 10 points since we opened on the S&P. Let's jump over to the VIX, see how we're trading right now. Volatility index, index at 26.84. We jumped to notes and bonds, chopping right at around 114 right now with a yield on the 10-year of about 3.55%. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat, writes the Tiger Forex Report. We'll be talking some Forex. We'll be talking some crude oil. We'll be talking some yields on Fed Day, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Teddy. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, positive by 19 points, trading at 38.92. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegsat. Folks, you can check out Teddy under newsletters, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out an outstanding letter every Monday and updates when warranted throughout the week. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Uh, always an interesting one when we talk to him on an interesting day like today, like Fed Day. Teddy Kegsat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, we have an exciting day today, don't we? Oh, boy, man. I don't know. Uh, as I was mentioning to Kevin Hinks, I said, we'll know a lot more when I talk to you tomorrow in 24 hours than we do today, because we find out a lot today, man. Um, where, where do you where, where? I guess let's jump to the Fed, Teddy. What do you what are you anticipating, if anything, this um, this afternoon from Chairman Powell? Uh, well, I think a three quarter point, no matter what, is something that should be expected. The full point, I don't know. Uh, it's very possible. It's, I think it's factored into the market already. Um, so, but yeah, I think for sure you're going to see a three-quarter point with the potential of a full point. You know, and uh, especially now that we have the ECB that's starting to uh, get hawkish, I think that there's no reason why Powell would uh, slow down his uh, course of action, if you will. And how would that play into things with the ECB? I guess is is when you look at, I mean, we have the dollar index surging even higher today, right? We got some action mm -hmm. going on with the dollar pushing 110.86 was the overnight. We're at 110.75 right now. Um, even though the ECB is hiking, I guess is the way to put it. That doesn't seem like it's slowing down what's happening at all, whether it's our yields or the dollar at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the ECB thing is only putting on the brakes a little bit as far as the euro US dollar trade is concerned. I still am very bearish that market. I mean, their three quarter point is only going to be canceled out by whatever we do today at the very least, you know, um, if not sure. actually taken over if we do a full point. So that makes it basically a moot, you know, action, if you will. So uh, the euro US dollar, I think, is still going to trend lower. I wouldn't doubt that after today, you may see a little profit taking rally going on against the dollar. I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, um, now <clears throat> you got to realize that the three quarter point was is definitely factored in. A lot of people are factor factoring in the full point. The Fed speak is going to be important. Are they are we looking? We know that they're going to remain hawkish. The question is, are they going to be firing on all cylinders? Remember, six months ago, we were talking about, you know, the Fed raising rates every meeting at about a half a percent, maybe three quarters here or there, you know. So and they started out with the halves. Now they're three quarters. You know, it's it's a very aggressive action that's going on right now. And the question is, how long are they going to maintain this? You know, and I was had a really interesting conversation with somebody in the real estate industry uh, just the other day. If you look at the yields, or, and or, excuse me, the mortgage rates, just in one year, 
they've tr- they've tripled. You're going up 300 percent at going into this meeting if they raise a, p- a full point or even three quarters of a point. You're basically up 300 percent. Now, when you're coming off of next to zero, a 300 percent gain is not that big of a deal. But still, it is a big jump as far as what rates are doing to the marketplace. You know, now we're not going to maintain that kind of rate. You know, like I wouldn't <laughs> if we're, if interest rates are up 300 percent from where they are right now to uh, going into today next year, then we have a really serious issue, you know, because mortgage rates will be in the teens, you know. So, um, but I think for sure, listen to what Powell has to say after this meeting. And I think he's going to stay aggressive. I think that what the stance that he has is he's going to remain hawkish into the rest of the year, especially with the way the economic numbers have been coming out. Yeah, that CPI number, right? And we still have an unemployment rate mm-hmm. that by historical standards, man, is pretty low. So we're, we're mm-hmm. gaining hundreds of thousands of jobs a month, man. We got unemployment at 3.5, 3.6%, and we have inflation mm-hmm. raging. So, yeah, I would say right. that they, they should keep the the pedal um, to the metal, as they would say. Right. What do you think of, of Russia, man, and the news going on with Russia impacting things at all in terms of, you know, that the, the energy, the crude? We got crude mm-hmm. sitting pretty... Healthy at $85 is in not that bad of a price tag right now, 85 especially with potentially things ratcheting up with Putin mm-hmm. over there. Uh, well, especially with crude right now, you know, we had that buy signal that we put out in the report a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> crude has been holding, you know, I mean, it's kind of bobbling off the lows. I think especially with this Russian thing that no matter what, things are going to escalate when it comes to commodity prices again. We're in the fall. We're coming into winter. These All these energy issues with the EU, they're going to come to roost sooner than later. Well, that's for sure. You know, you got to realize we are very, very lucky, even in the U.S. with the way, I mean, the climatologists will tell you the earth, that we're, the earth is falling apart, but we haven't had any major storms in the U.S. that we normally have going into the fall. You know, we haven't had Houston hit with any hurricanes. Sure. You know, that has that hasn't had any we haven't had any disruptions on the refinery or supply side in america which is weird for this time of year usually we will have had at least one major storm hit houston you know it's like clockwork now globally the same issue is there now we're coming into winter what happens if the weather starts to really go hard this 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 winter come november and december the price the energy prices in europe are crippling them if the ukrainian russian conflict this is not going to be over in six months this is not going to end at, at any time soon you know now i don't know yeah. hopefully it doesn't get escalating on a, in a really bad way but there is no way I can see this panning out that we're going to have some kind of peace talks or neutrality or easing up Oof. on anything, you know, over the next six months. The sanctions that are on Russia aren't hurting Russia. They're destroying the, the economy of the EU right now. And they're also affecting all kinds of other trade balances across the world. You know, lines in the sand were drawn by these sanctions. Those are not going to go away, even if you have peace talks between the Ukraine and Russia. You know, I mean, the reality yeah. is India, China, these things they're in motion they're set in stone now why would they come back to the table with the united states or even europe or any of these other countries that have now put them through all this financial nightmare because on their their end they're looking at it like well we're not involved in this war why do we have to have our economy suffer because of what you're doing to act you know for your actions you know and i think it's all going to come to roost i think that the dollar right now we're riding a nice little wave higher, but when this thing turns, you know, and it could really turn very quickly next year, you're going to see a sell off in the dollar like you saw in the bonds over the past year, you know, and that's going to be very big. You were talking about where the dollar index was a year ago. We could be back at those levels in less than one year's time when we go down, when we start going the other way. Wherever we eventually turn, because, yeah, we will get over mm-hmm. that at some point, as in, I sure. think, you know, at least you have a, a chairman who may be late to the party of the Fed, but uh, seems like the focus is there. And it seems like, fortunately, our economy can handle it right now, at least better than mm-hmm. Europe in terms of really, you know, crushing things to the point of getting inflation under control and having an right. economy that, yeah, might not be as good as it's been. Um, but hopefully mm-hmm. the, the Fed doesn't completely destroy that where they have to come into the rescue following that. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's jump to the dollar yen. All right. Because I was kind of surprised mm-hmm. to see we got dollar yen um, up a bit. We got gold up uh, even ten dollars. But gold, man, near near recent lows. You're talking about years. But what's your take on the yen, Teddy, as we push 144? Kind of similar. We're just chopping mm-hmm. around in this area. Uh, well, right now, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that. Uh, 
after the meeting <clears throat> when the, when the number gets hiked up i think for sure you're going to see a little spike in say us dollar yen uh they've already hit through some key resistance with um i mean in the very short amount of time over the past few weeks to begin with and i think that there's no way to see that no reason to think that these levels aren't going to keep continuing uh to make higher move highs and higher move lows so i think that after the meeting we're going to probably see if not today over the next couple of sessions we're going to see new highs in the yen i can see us going to 150 over the next couple of weeks if not the next two weeks or so and will that eventually get the same type of pullback like the dollar uh, when that when that turns in the years to come oh well eventually yeah that will but it's going to take you know, a real a much Here, Hang with us for one more yeah. segment, okay, Teddy? Perfect. Sure. We'll be right back, folks. Talk a little again to finish it up. We'll be right TFNN back. TFNN okay. has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up about 23 points right now, trading at 38.96. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. So just finishing up, Teddy, talking about, you know, because it is interesting to think about, right? We have the dollar index mm -hmm. charging above 110. Once we eventually maybe roll over, maybe once the Fed gets inflation under control, they don't have to be as restrictive. Uh, yields come into things, of course. Maybe that rolls over. Uh, now, is that uh, going to translate of course, it's going to translate to dollar pairings versus any currency. But mm -hmm. the way the yen has ridden up there, is that kind of a market that you could look for similar top that, that would be tied to that type of a rollover in the dollar? 
Oh, I think that once we start to see the the Fed not be so hawkish, that that would give us a good situation for a correction. I think really the only way you're going to see a big correction in the end, though, is if we have another big sell-off in oil. You know, that's one of the big things. And I would say if we get a bounce in the bonds in the 10-year, which is very likely after this Fed meeting, you know, in, in a couple of sessions, now I would think that we may still – push the lows first, you know, spike before we, uh, you know, reverse for a correction. But we're, we're due for a correction. I mean, the way the bonds and the 10-year cool. over trade now, there's no Seriously. reason to not see that we would have a three, four basis handle correction. If we have something like that, we could easily have a four to six dollar sell off in the yen, you know. So, I mean, right now we're trading around 143. To get back to 137 for a bounce, very, very likely, you know, I think that going any lower than that, you could maybe get down to the 135 area. But that would be if we have like a week and a half to two weeks of the um, yields basically trending lower in the U.S. on the 10 year and the 30 year, which could very easily happen in between the next Fed meetings. We have a little gap now between this meeting and the next meeting. So for us to have a bounce, you know, going against the trend of the Fed, the market, I mean, you got to realize the mortgage, the bankers right now are scrambling for people to refinance because they know that rates are going up. I mean, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday, you know, that they were trying to get people to refinance and lock them in yesterday. I'm like, well, that would be a good thing to do because tomorrow it's going to be up a full point. <laughs> you know? Sure. No, I you. hear you, man. The end so. is not in sight just yet, in my opinion. Um, right. But we get to find out today. Teddy, thanks for right. taking the time. As always, man, we appreciate it. Time. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Folks, Thank check out you. the Tiger Forex report. Thanks so much for tuning in. Starting your day. Stay tuned. Basil's up next, folks. It's Fed Day. Don't go away. We'll be right back.